YouTube. It's full of different types of thumbnails. Some are simple, some are complicated, but they all have one common goal. Are they clickable? Today, I decided to put myself to the test. Could I create a clickable YouTube thumbnail under pressure? I will be making three different thumbnails, one in one minute, one in 10 minutes, and one in an hour. And then I'm going to send them to a client to see his actual reaction. I'll be a little disappointed with this one, but. First up, the one minute thumbnail. The video this thumbnail is for is about the various changes happening to the Elder Mall and the Dragon Warhammer in old school RuneScape. The main thing it needs to communicate is that the Elder Mall is getting improvements and that the Dragon Warhammer is getting slightly worse in some way. For this first thumbnail, I am pretty tight for time, so I'm gonna go for a really simple design. We're gonna have the old Elder Mall filling pretty much the entire composition, and then we are going to have maybe some text that says buff this, or it's getting a buff, or something like that, with a big, solid, vibrant background. So I'm just gonna drag and drop the Elder Mall in, angle it a bit so it takes up the maximum amount of screen space, and we got 51 seconds left. Jesus, solid color background. Let's make it blue so it contrasts, actually no, red. Orange, orange is gonna be good. It'll contrast really nicely there. We're gonna add some layer styles in. 30 seconds on the clock, bevel and emboss, increase the size a bit so it has a bit of sheen. Add some outer glow, make sure that's nice and big. And we're gonna add some text, we're gonna make the text white. Buff this, we have nine seconds. Oh my gosh, buff this, make it big and Boom, two seconds left on the clock. Whew. One minute is up and we have our final product. Honestly, this one is, this kind of stinks, this sucks. This thumbnail is not good. It could be possible if you wanted a really basic thumbnail, really fast and the video is kind of low quality, but to be honest, this doesn't suggest any kind of quality. And if you were paying for a thumbnail, I don't think one minute is enough time to make something. Overall, I think if the viewer was scrolling through YouTube, they'd probably look at this and assume that the video is low quality, but it does complete the task of communicating communicating what the video is about. This weapon requires a buff. I do not think the client is going to like this one. The client is gonna look at this and think it's the worst thing ever. Since we have 10 minutes, it's probably going to be better in this scenario to focus on both weapons. Maybe we could have a split thumbnail and on one side we have the Elder Maul and then on the other side we have the Dragon Warhammer. Bright, vibrant backgrounds are gonna really make this work. And maybe we have a tick and a cross to suggest that one is really good and the other is just a bit subpar. Lastly, we could probably have some text at the top that's really gonna help communicate the message. 10 minutes on the clock. We're gonna have our two items, one on either side to kind of create a separation. Gosh, it is nice having a bit more time on the clock. Text on this one, boom, that's pretty good for now. Let's go for like a dark green. looking good. Maybe this one should be blue. Blue and yellow is a nice color palette. Now we can add in our check and cross icon, make it just a bit bigger so it stands out. Add a bit of a bevel and a boss. Now over to the Warhammer. Let's add a bit of styles to this so it can stand out really nicely because we don't really have time to shade. We have five minutes left on the clock. And the easiest way to fake our shading is with the bevel and boss tool. So we're gonna set that there. Increase the exposure a bit. Just make it stand out and be that little bit brighter and drag all the same stuff over to the Elder Mall. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of stuff to the text. The text is looking pretty vanilla right now. Oh, look at that, add a drop shadow. It already looks fancy. Maybe add a glow. Nah, that looks cheap. Yeah. I'm gonna add a little drop shadow to the line as well, just to help it pop out a bit more and, and seem a bit more physical in the world. And we're gonna use a camera raw filter. Add some contrast, increase the shadows. Oh yeah, she looking good. Oh, and I wanna add that bad boy. That's actually looking pretty good. We got two minutes left on the clock. What can I add in two minutes to make this really stand out and just like pop? I'm gonna add a subtlest of drop shadow to the tick. Multiply because we are painting on white and white doesn't really work very nicely. It just adds that little bit of extra depth that looks quite nice. Look at that X, it looks so chunky. Add a little bit of sheen to the hammer. Gosh, I'm getting a bit greedy with this. We got 42 seconds left and that just helps it like separate a bit from the background and helps the elements kind of pop out a bit more too. Probably my signature trait in my thumbnails is that little bit of sheen and sharp lights that I add in. Just clean it up the tiniest bit. I think that's all we can do, 14 seconds left. Whew. And that is 10 minutes up and completed. Personally, I really like this one. I think it actually meets probably that minimum quality required to be a good thumbnail. The colors are really vibrant. It stands out, the composition is 
quite pleasing. Overall, I think it's really good. And I actually reckon the client is gonna really like this one. But how is this going to stack up to the one hour variation? This is the one that I'm probably most excited for because you can really pull out a whole lot of stuff in an hour. You can use a lot of interesting techniques, but we're gonna put a bit more time into it to really make it pop out and be extra vibrant. Let's go. So one hour gives me a quite a fair bit more time. Where I'm gonna start is with my general layout. I'm thinking something a bit more complex than previously. Oh my gosh, it's so much nicer having a full hour. That can now sit there, looking real good. And we can add some text that will say, Dragon Warhammer. The key thing with that Dragon Ball Hammer is making sure you use the nearest neighbor interpolation mode. Otherwise it'll get really blurry really fast. One coin. Wanna add a little shadow to the Warhammer itself? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this layer and this is a nice way to add a little bit of glow. We're gonna go and add some little subtle bit of blur. And then we go screen. And what this does is it adds some blur but it matches the colors to the right areas. Perspective warp. That's just gonna help it look that little bit nicer. Secret to the J mod man is we add in a little crown over the top of our character, use perspective warp to make it match. It's almost like a comic book character where it doesn't really make sense, but for the sake of the lore, it does make sense. I'm gonna add like a little graph into the background and I'm just gonna add a nice little line. We add some inner glow into this too. That could look nice. We grab the quick select and we go alt. Yeah, I probably could use the fill bucket to get away with it, but we got 51 minutes left on the clock and do that. She looks good. We're now gonna draw our attention to the J-Mod man. We're gonna start to paint him and make sure that the red interacts rather nicely and looks, makes it look like he actually exists here. We're gonna start by adding in some occlusion shadows. One thing I like to do with this, especially since RuneScape is such a low poly game, I like to use very straight lines because it kind of breaks it up a bit and makes it look like it belongs. Like it's been a bit painted because the lines are straight. I think I wanna change the color of the suit too. I think a yellow suit might stand out that little bit more. I think a red tie might look nice too. Again, just masking out the hands and the rest of the body. And then we can blend, change the blend mode and the suit's just gonna look amazing. That's one hell of a banging suit. Soft shadows and a little bit on the shoulder, a little bit pleading in there. Just having a little paintbrush available is always handy. Should probably add a green glow coming off the um, sold window. Gosh, he's looking good. I feel like these buttons here shouldn't be orange. I've just realized that now. I'm pretty happy with how this is coming out. I think this might be a winner. Oh my gosh, that's such a good looking suit. Man, I wanna wear that at my wedding. All right, I'm gonna add another shadow layer and I wanna have little areas like underneath the coat here stand out on this arm and some of these little creases look a bit nicer. So we're just gonna have a medium sized brush Thing I wanna change here is the text. I love my drop shadow, it excites me. One of the things with glows is you wanna use glows to draw attention to something. And if you don't want people to have their attention drawn to it, don't add glows. That's a pretty pretty stylish text. Let's adjust the stroke a bit. Ooh, that looks really nice. Boom, he looks heaps better now. Before. After. Dude, we got 24 minutes left on the clock. I didn't expect this to go quite so fast. So let's set the blend mode to darken. And I wanna have it like a dark blue. This is gonna help focus the scene and make sure the eye draws to where we want it to. Looks good. We'll see what it looks like with a little bit of lens distortion. So I'm gonna merge all the layers together. Sometimes you can use lens distortion to like create that little bit of cool effect to make big things stand out a bit more. That looks really good. Something like this can grab someone's attention, just that tiniest bit and these little points here. I usually avoid doing custom style fonts, but we have that time, so I wanna mess with it. Yeah, I can mess with this. This looks great. People that are psychopaths go in and they'll just, woo, make sure those fingers have nice gaps. We are a psychopath now. Oh no, Skull, you ruined it. You do it really rough and then you add an eraser over the top. Just gotta find the right blend mode to make it pop. Bring it down, four, after. I'm not quite happy with that color red. That's more like a cherry red. And I think we want a bit more of a blood red. Now I need to have that little concern of file size addressed. To do that, I'm just gonna add some posturization and just clean it up a bit. Damn, I love that look. I know it's not good for a thumbnail, but I love this look of everything being super low quality and like it's been put through a microwave for 10 hours. I just wanna submit stuff like this to clients sometimes and be like, look, 
dude, you have no idea the time I put into this. I made it look really good and then I baked it. This is an easy way using the hue and saturation to just shift everything over and see if there's any colors that might look nicer as a color choice. To see like, hey, would the suit look better if it's yellow slightly? It'd look better if it's redder and just nudge it in that little direction. I think the redder one looked a little bit nice. Edge enhancement. Gosh, that warp is really nice. We are done. Holy moly, we cooked that one. We got five minutes left on the clock. I got nothing left I can add. Anything else I'm gonna love to add is gonna completely detract. We added speed lines. We added bloody finger shadows. Job's done. A one hour thumbnail completed. I personally love this one. It is by far the best and the most eye catching. In reflection, I think after 30 minutes, we start to get a bit of diminishing returns in this one and the changes we were making and effects we were putting in probably aren't gonna influence someone to click quite as much as what we did in the first half hour. However, I'm really curious now, what is the client going to think? All right, let's take a look at these thumbnails. So when I first take a look at this thumbnail, I immediately think that this is something that I could have done. This is kind of like what I would expect if they were sending me like a rough draft of like <laughs> maybe what they're kind of mapping out, even though there's not really much mapped out. I'll be a little disappointed with this one, but it gets the job done kind of. It's just not great. Number two. Okay, as the client, this is kind of like what I sent over. He kind of took what was in my head and put it out there perfectly. Really just like contrast is big. I love contrast. I immediately know what is more or less going to be going on with this video. And it has passed that threshold of, look, we got some effort put into this thumbnail. I would totally use this thumbnail for a behemoth video. And lastly, we got the third thumbnail. I would definitely say compared to the other two, this one has the highest production value. And we got a couple things that I want to point out. First of all, having the cell window at a different angle than what the people usually see in the game. I love that. That adds like major variety and like, ooh, how did they do that? I'm a big fan of the speed lines on the edges. I always Always love when the thumbnails got good speed lines and then we have the beautiful Jagex character off to the side directing your attention to a different part of the thumbnail which I love I love just like let's focus on this one part so it's almost like we have an actor and a supporting actor it's a hard pick between going between the the third thumbnail and the second thumbnail I would probably go with the second thumbnail first because I like how the colors are contrasting and I think that if you're scrolling on the YouTube timeline it's just gonna pop and I just want it to pop and I want them to click on it. But you really can't go wrong with either one. It's gonna be on how you set up the title to complement each one. But I mean, both of these thumbnails are great. The first one was not good. <laughs> All right, a fun little extra piece of information. I'm filming this after I have already published the video that used these thumbnails. And like I just said, I initially went with the second thumbnail, the one that was uh, split with the big contrasting colors. And it was not performing well in the first hour. And I switched it to the third one, the one that clearly had the most time put into it. Immediately, it was doing better. So my thoughts of picking the contrasting one, I was wrong. The third one, it just did better. I don't know, that's just part of the thumbnail game. I thought one was gonna do better, the other one did better, and I'm not trying to be the one that's right, I just want good thumbnails that people click on, so I'm glad we found one that worked. No shock that it's the one that probably took the most time. Three thumbnails created, one in one minute, one in 10 minutes, and one in an hour. Personally, the hour one blows everything out of the park, but that's to be expected, right? But the 10 minute one, that really stood out. I don't think it would take too much more to make that a really solid thumbnail that could compete with the one hour one. If you did enjoy this video and wanna see a little bit more, then you may wanna check out this video I have on the screen now where I go over the entire process of making a settled thumbnail.